stream. It has been a while since we've done a live stream, so this should be a good time. Catch up with everyone, see what's up. Um, 5.06 p.m. Eastern Time, so a little early for the West Coast, but uh, we'll do what we can. We'll see who's around, just checking in, seeing what everybody's up to. Still setting everything up here, making sure everything's the way it should be. It's so few and far between when I get to do these live streams, I forget uh, what I need to do to get everything going. But we are close to good to go. All right, we're set up. Let's see. Welcome, first person. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Two people now. This is good. This is a good start. Weird time like this. How's everybody doing? Welcome aboard. Cheers to you all. Let's do it so the logo's facing out. Clip show. How you doing, buddy? Jim, what's going on, pal? Auto Man Dan. Long time no talk is right, and that is terrible. I miss you all. Eric, how's it going? Tam, what's up? Good to see uh, all of the friendly faces of the channel. Peter, how's it going? Good, good, good. Good to see people are around. Again, had some time. Decided I wanted to do a live stream because it's been a minute. Isaiah, good to see you. Uh, you know, just want to talk, catch up, see what everybody's up to, see what we're what we're dealing with out there as far as getting new tundras, uh, with the 2022s. Um, how tough has it been for you? It seems like it's still a little tough to get exactly what you want, but we see a lot more 2022s out there now. I'm seeing capstones all over the place as far as uh, when I search nationwide. I'm talking on the lot pictures of capstone, not just you know your internet pictures of inbound or in transit. Let me just tell you, since this 2022 Tundra has come out, the term in transit is blasphemy. I am so sick of that term. Because you go on a website, and even locally here, like I'll go on a website and see if a, if a truck is coming, and it shows it listed because obviously it's inbound, but it goes from in transit to just not being there anymore because they don't update it because they never get on the lot. Because uh, they show up and they're sold pretty much as they come off the truck. So, uh, you know, it's still weird out there as far as getting what you want, seeing any inventory on, depends on where you are in the country, but seeing inventory on the lots around the country. Uh, but those capstones, TRD Pros, all the big trims are really starting to hit hard. Johnny, what's going on? Lord, off work today. It's 100 degrees with no AC here. That no AC, that is not good. Emmanuel, how you doing? Toyota 4Runner, hello from North Carolina. Let me just say the 4Runner is one of, if not, the greatest Toyota vehicle of all time. My wife owns a 2020 TRD Off-Road Premium. We love it. Love it, love it. Leonard, what's going on? Greetings from Arizona, but in New Jersey, just south of you until Friday. Well, where are you in New Jersey? And please make sure you have a good time out there. It's going to be warm all weekend long. Auto Man Dan says, so Mark, I got a chance to test out the new Tundra. All I have to say is... Hold on, let me get all these emojis right. You're sick, you're throwing up, you're frozen, and you're scared. Why would Toyota do this? Well, which one did you test drive? Let's break it down and see where you are with that one. TJ says, saw a 2022 Tundra lifted on 35s. Unreal up in Edmonton, Canada. I love it. All right. I wish we could get some pictures of that. If you ever see it again, see what you can do about uh, grabbing a shot. Send it my way. Eric says, my dealer told me end of 2023 for a pro if ordered today. I've heard that a few times, and then people end up getting them a lot sooner. Um, there is a huge waiting list, of course, for pros. Uh, but if you look, and this is what I always say, and I know I say it all the time. I like to repeat myself because I just want to stress points to you guys to make you happy uh, in getting your purchase and you know your satisfaction in getting what you want. Some of these people buy pros or order a pro through an allocation at a dealership, and then they back out when the pro comes in. And then there's a pro sitting there waiting for someone. I see that a lot. So if you have a rapport with your dealer and, you know, mention you want a pro, you may be able to get that phone call. Hey, somebody backed out. Come get this solar octane right now. You know, you never know. Just have a good rapport with your dealer. Offer says, why Tundra does it, why doesn't Tundra have handles above the windows? Um, that's a great question. I don't know. It has the grab handle. The new one has the grab handle both left and right, driver side and passenger side now. Uh, but for 14 to 21, it only had the right side. But that's a great question why it doesn't have those handles. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, Tam says, I bought a Hyundai Santa Cruz to hold me over, and I have to admit it's awesome. I saw one on the, the road the other day. Uh, it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. It's interesting looking. Those mini trucks, man, that's, that's the new vibe, I'm telling you. Auto Man Dan says, Idaho is a hot 93 degrees with 101 by 6 p.m. May I just say, Idaho has the potatoes, so we love Idaho. 
Uh, Auto Man Dan says he test drove an SR5. Okay, I like that you said that because the SR5 comes with the regular iForce, all right? Um, it doesn't have the option of the hybrid. So I test drove a Limited in February. So if you're new to the channel, check out the playlist. Uh, a 2022 Limited TRD off-road, and it had that regular iForce. And it left me a little bit to be desired. I got used to it at the end of the week. In the beginning of the week, I was trying to find a way to enjoy it. There's a sport mode, an eco mode, a normal mode. Um, the sport mode definitely helped it out quite a bit. Then I got into the Pro, and that was the iForce Max, and that engine was a lot of fun. Uh, that driving experience was completely different than the regular iForce, and I really enjoyed that Pro iForce versus iForce Max, iForce Max all day, but I want to stress this, at the end of my time with that regular iForce, I found the way to have it set up to where driving it was, a, you know, good fun, to the point where my true gauge is, when they come to pick the truck up to take back after the press vehicle loan, am I sad, happy, or do I not care? Well, at the end of that 2022 Limited, I was pretty sad to see it go. At the end of the Pro, they were driving down the street to take it back, and I was holding on to the tailgate with all my might to not let it go. So, you know, take that for what you will. Let's have a sip. First off, guys, we haven't done this in a while. A huge cheers to all the military and emergency services of the United States and Canada. Thank you for all you do to defend our countries and help us have great lives every single day. God bless America. God bless Canada, too. It's the 51st state. We love you. All right, back at it here. Isaiah says, my 2021, by the way, this is my first day off from work in seven days. I earned this adult beverage. I hope you're having one with me out there. Isaiah says, my 2021 Platinum is back at my local Toyota dealership for an ongoing AC issue starting to get annoying. What seems to be the problem? Because that is very annoying. Dan says, I'll be honest, I'm looking at the Ram 1500. And then I test drove the F-150. The Chevy is a waste of money. 5.3 liter is gutless. Um... All right, so if you go Ram, you're going to go Hemi, V8 Hemi, which eventually is going to go away sooner than you think, so make sure you get in on that. If you go F-150, I'm going to guess you're going to go 5.0 V8 Coyote, a very good engine also, I must say. It's a very powerful, very responsive engine. I'm guessing you won't go the EcoBoost way because you're not feeling the Tundra. Uh, so what's your thoughts on that Ram 1500? I, I like the Ram 1500. Out of all of the trucks other than Tundra, the Ram 1500 is number two for me, and that's in styling. Um, I really like the Uconnect system, uh, and, you know, Hemi, dude, Hemi. Lord says, here's an odd question that gives away my priorities. What's the nine-speaker sound system like? The speaker systems that I dealt with in the Limited and the Pro were night and day better than the old, uh, you know, 14 to 21 Tundra. The JBL in the 14 to 21, you know, I had the Platinum, and now I have the 2020 TRD Pro. They both have the JBL system. They leave a little bit to be desired. If the windows are up, um, you know, and you play around with the bass treble and, you know, your balance and your music, it's not awful, uh, but if you put those windows down, you really got to turn it up. In the new Tundra, I feel like they fixed that issue because you really don't need to go up into those higher, uh, you know, volume numbers like you would have to in the 14 to 21. A lot more of an enjoyable sound. So take that for what you will. Ed, how you doing, buddy? He says, greetings, my dude. I managed to get on a waiting list out here in L.A. for a TRD Pro Lunar with black interior, supposedly for MSRP. I will believe it when I see it. Also, there is no ETA. The wait continues. The wait is usually pretty long. If you could get that for MSRP in Cali, that'll be a big deal because there's very few in Cali that do that, but that's awesome. And Lunar with the black interior is absolutely the way to go, in my opinion. Auto Man says, Amen, Mark. Absolutely. Anthony, how you doing, buddy? And truck drivers, absolutely. The over-the-road truck drivers, they keep the countries going. Without them, we shut down. So we love those over-the-road truckers, even the local guys. We need you. Auto Man Dan says, you are correct, Mark. V8 all the way. Baby gas prices be damned. Yep. So those V8s are eventually going to go away. Uh, Toyota was ahead of the curb. You know, a lot of people were like, why didn't Toyota keep, you know, the 5.7 or the 4.6 or some kind of other V8? Uh, you know, that has been the biggest thing people have been talking about since this new generation Tundra. And I think Toyota, because of all the cafe standards that are right on the doorstep, you know, with this new generation, they went ahead and took care of that up front. And you will start to see the other brands follow suit eventually. Uh, you know, this all really started with the Ford F-150 doing EcoBoost back, you know, 10 years ago now. Uh, you know, they kept the V8 on because, you know, V8 standards weren't where they are today. But, 
you're going to start seeing them disappear and eventually we will see nothing but uh, forced induction V6 is out there and then you know hybrid setups like we're seeing now and then all electric so you know I'm not really on board with the all electric thing yet uh, you know it just doesn't make sense to me they got to figure out a way to make charging way faster and you got to think infrastructure countrywide uh, you know if I if I want to go to Vegas right now and I want to drive my Tundra from Jersey to Vegas I can and I don't really have to think about it I go up the street I fill up and I head west and when I need gas, I pull into a gas station, I fill up, it takes me five to 10 minutes, and I continue on. Now, if you're somebody who's gonna be in an, like an EV, like a full electric, you have to plan your trips out. And you have to plan to pull in somewhere for a couple hours to charge. We're not where we need to be with the EVs yet. I feel like the middle of the road right now is uh, hybrids, like a system like the Tundra has, where you don't need to plug it in at all. You just go, you fill it up with gas, it has a little bit better mileage, uh, you know, and, and you kind of go with that. But I'm just not on board with, you know, full EV, finding places to plug in and sit around for an hour or two while it charges up. And then there's factors that come into play, like, are you towing? Because that's going to drain battery a lot quicker. Um, you know, how is your cargo, your hauling? There's so many things that come into play. You, it's almost like you're becoming like a, a boat captain where you have to plot your course and you have to understand you know, the weight dynamics and everything about wind and all that uh, when it comes to EV. And I feel like we rushed into EVs a little bit here, and I'm not there. I'm still 5.7 liter V8 right now sitting in the driveway, and I like the hybrid iForce Max that's coming or that, um, you know, I test drove and that is here now. Uh, but as far as, like, Ford Lightning, I'm good, but that's me to each their own, you know? That was called a ramble, and that was a large iced coffee cream and sugar from Dunkin', that is providing you with that ramble because as you know I work overnight and I don't sleep so rock and roll all right let's see let's go back catch up uh, Austin says enjoy the channel hey appreciate you being here always uh, use my 2011 5.7 crew for towing my boat and jet ski do the newer 5.7 models tow any better or exactly the same well let's keep in mind with the 5.7 they lost the transmission cooler after the 2018 model year. So 2019 to 2021 does not have the transmission cooler anymore, the external transmission cooler anymore. Um, for me, in driving Tundras and all types of Tundras for a long time, I can tell you my experiences with the 2020 and the 2021s that I've driven, uh, it feels like the recalibration they did on the 5.7 after that transmission cooler went away made the driving experience completely different. Ultra responsive. I went from a 2017 supercharged Platinum back to a naturally aspirated 5.7 2020. I thought I was going to hate it coming off that much power, uh, but it was comparable. It felt great. The transmission and the 5.7 worked together flawlessly, um, and I felt like the driving experience was amazing. Uh, you Just keep in mind, you're towing, so it did get rid of that external transmission cooler. Depends on your weight and everything, but just something you want to keep in mind. You can have it installed. I've seen people bring it to the dealers and have the transmission cooler installed. Uh, but as far as driving dynamics, for me, in the trucks I've driven, it felt like the 2020 and the 2021, I own the 2020, press loan, the 2021 for when I do reviews, felt ultra responsive, even to this day after owning my Pro for two years. So that's the way I feel, and other owners agree on that one as well. I hope that helps, my friend. And thank you for watching, always. Mike says, hey, Tundra Dude from North Idaho. We got a lot of Idaho in the house today. Now... For the folks that are from Idaho, something I always hear over here, and you can tell me if it's true or not, does Frito-Lay own a lot of that state out there when it comes to farms and everything for potatoes? That is one rumor I always hear around here, that Frito-Lay has bought up a lot of Idaho. Please let me know. Mike Olson says, V8 all the way. There's a lot of people that feel that way, absolutely. And that's the good news that I always say to folks out there that are feeling that way about the V8. I don't want any of that you know, forced induction stuff. I want my V8. Good news. The 5.7 liter V8 Tundra, that engine is going to run forever. All right. It's highly reliable. One of, if not the best Toyota engines of all time. So you buy a 2020 or a 2021, you take care of it. It's going to be around a while. So you don't have to worry about this forced induction stuff for a long time. Just enjoy what you have. There's no loss here. If you want the new technology and you're someone who maybe likes leasing or you trade in your car every few years, maybe that new generation's the way to go. If you're someone who likes that old school feel of a pickup truck, 
The Tundra was the last of that. Go enjoy it. Go enjoy it. Absolutely. Dan says, well, Mark, the EcoBoost is good, but they're having cam phaser issues and electrical issues. Uh, so I'm going to hold off. And yes, Mark, Hemi for the RAM all day. My brother got the 3.6, the Pentastar, in his RAM. I'm going to be seeing him in August again. I'm going to do a video on that truck because I'd love to drive it and see what it feels like. Rodeo, what's going on, buddy? What's up, Mark? Just got here. been hearing about a recall for about 46,000 trucks. I did a video on that a few weeks ago now. I can't remember. Um, and it's for that rear axle issue they're having on the Tundra. Go check it out. It's out there. I would say maybe like 10 videos back. Ed says, off topic, did you see that slimy Hoot Coors Life that was trending a couple weeks ago? No, but I wish you wouldn't bring that up while I have one. But uh, if anything happens to me, I'll make a video for sure. I hate hearing about good stuff like that, especially when I'm sipping it. Dan says, well, Mark, I'm also looking at an electric SUV to have as kind of a go-around type vehicle, but my guest power truck will be the primary vehicle. I'm more concerned about the driving aspect of long journeys. Locally, an electric vehicle can make a lot of sense because you're plugging in at home every night, um, so you really won't have an issue with that. Um, but I want my vehicle to do everything. But if you have the means to have two, rock and roll. Uh, Josh says, do you have a 2022 yet? I bought mine in February and it already has 15,000 miles. I do not have a 2022 yet. Um, I was ma I made a video, I don't even know, maybe less than a week ago now. Just a quick disclaimer, because I say that a lot. Oh, I don't remember when I made a video. When you work overnight, when you work graveyard shift, all the days kind of mesh together. So instead of being like, hey, what day it is? I can't answer right away. I got to think for a second. So please bear with me with that. I apologize. Just trying to make ends meet, you know? Um, I don't have a 2022 yet. If I knew it would take this long, I wanted an iForce Max from Jump. That's what I cared about, the hybrid, the new stuff. Uh, if I knew it would take this long to get one, which I'm still working on, which I'm very close to finishing up on, I'm not announcing anything until it's 100% because I've had some failures along the way. But if I knew it was going to take this long, I would have bought a regular iForce back when they first came out, like last October, November, and rocked that until the iForce Max was ready. I was under the impression the iForce Max would be a few months behind the iForce. Uh, so that's why I didn't do that. But I'm not mad because I love my Pro. But it is coming, hopefully sooner than later. I'm in the final stages. Once that gets locked up, announcement made, done deal, move on down the road. Move on down the road. Delicious, delicious. Uh, I don't know where I am. Okay. Sean says, good evening, Mark and everyone. Sean, how you doing, buddy? Been a minute since I've been able to catch a live. Don't forget to thumbs up, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Sean, of all the years you've been around here, uh, how you feeling about the 2022? How you feeling about your Tundra? Tell us everything. Sean has been here maybe 2017, 2018. It's been a minute, and I appreciate that. Gilmer says, Mark, how are you doing? I already have a Tundra 2020. I want to buy a Toyota Tacoma manual V6, but prices are, excuse me, prices are outrageous. They are. Um, the manual is awesome in the taco. I have driven one of them, a fun vehicle for sure. Um, it's one of those old school manuals. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but let me just put it in this way. Think of like the Toyota 86, like the BRZ, the old FRS that has like a short throw transmission. Um, feels a lot more modern than your classic Corolla. Like if you get into a Corolla right now, that six speed feels like something you would teach a kid on. Uh, you know, the clutch is very forgiving. It's not like razor thin to get that clutch and pedal to engage correctly. Uh, there's room for error. So the catch point is wide, we should say. Uh, and that's how I felt about the Tacoma. The Tacoma, when you're driving the stick version of the Tacoma, it feels like an old school pickup truck for me. Uh, you know, if I ever had the, the means and the money, I would definitely have just a little manual pickup on the side uh, just for good times because manuals are fun. Why not? I haven't driven one in a minute, though. I'd probably get out there and stall all over the place for the first 15 minutes and get back on it. Last time I drove a manual, they gave me, uh, in 2019, late 2019, I had two press vehicles. I had the new Corolla hatchback, which was awesome, and the Toyota 86. They were both in that really cool voodoo blue look. Ah, let's see. Keep your pro, dude, Aaron says. I ah, probably won't keep the pro. Um... You know, with the channel, I like to move forward with what's out there. Uh, if I was just a regular owner, I would totally keep the Pro. I'll put it out to you that way. Uh, but, you know, I base this channel around current information on the Tundra, you know, in general. 
it's more based around that stuff than what I'm driving. But I like to keep close to what you guys have as far as what I am driving to be able to speak to it, which is why that's one of the main reasons I actually got rid of the 2017 Platinum that we had, you know, a few years ago that's supercharged and we did a pro build on it. Um, I felt like having a supercharged Tundra versus w what most people have, which is the naturally aspirated 5.7, was a bad idea. So I went ahead and, you know, got this 2020. And that's why we're moving forward with it. But uh, I do love the Pro. Please, don't ever think I don't. I do love the 5.7 V8 more than you'll ever understand. Don't ever think I don't. Uh, you know, it's just the new dawn for the Tundra. And, uh, you know, I got to keep on keeping on. Uh, Kitch, what's going on? Love my 2022 TRD Pro. Oh, Kitch is enjoying his life right now. Fun drive, right? It's a good time. Josh says, Houston, Texas. Excuse, ugh, I can't talk. Let's take a sip and then do that again. Houston, Texas. I've seen more than 25 tundras in my area, and they look nice. I do wish I got the bigger gas tank. Do you think they will have a switchable gas tank? I think they will. I think if you contact a place like Sparks Parts, uh, they might already have something like that uh, they could take care of for you because they have the regular parts too. And if you go to Sparks Parts, don't forget, Tundra Dude 34 at, I almost said the, the Gmail, my email. Tundra Dude 34 saves you 5%. Site-wide. Uh, let's see. Gulf Bay Photography, how you doing? So it seems a lot of Tundras got put on QC hold yesterday, the old quality control hold. I think the Tundras have been going through the QC hold um, for a while now, and that's not because of an announcement through Toyota or anything like that, but in talking to all of the owners or potential owners, there's been a lot of holdups on their delivery dates, um, seeing that left and right. So um, if, it, if things are on quality control, it's probably for that new recall with the rear axle. So hopefully they take care of that, check the bolts, and then they send them on their way. But it's the first year, and a lot of people are going crazy because, you know, there's been a couple recalls already, quality control hold, uh, holds like that. Uh, but it's the new generation. It's a new year. A lot of times when these new vehicles come out, they go through a lot of this in the beginning, a lot of growing pains. The Tundra is ground up remodel, so growing pains are what we should expect. Uh, you know how people always say never buy the first model year of a new generation, and these are the reasons why, because we get through all this, and then a couple model years in, they perfect everything move on down the road the one good thing about recalls is you know they're acknowledging it and taking care of it up front and you know they learn from that and then they move on but recalls it doesn't matter what brand they're always there in the old tundra 14 to 21 i bought a 2014 two weeks after i bought it it was in there for a recall so you know it just is what it is but uh you know at least they're addressing the issues up front that's all i care about uh, Mark, not really. Frito Lay doesn't own Idaho yet. Okay, that's some. A driver said that to me the other day, uh, who was hauling potatoes from Idaho, and that came up. Eric says, "Mark, how you doing?" Eric, if you're good, I'm good, buddy. So uh, if you're in a good mood, we're all good on this end. Gilmer says, "I wanted to buy a single cab, short bed, but it's still a big vehicle. Those RCSB Tundras are amazing." Tori, good to see you, pal. How is the great state, the great state of Utah? Please let me know. Um, Mike said, never heard about that Frito-Lay buying up Idaho. That might have just been the truck driver I was talking to. Blew my mind. You know, chips, potato. Dan says, Mark, why did your brother buy a V6? He should have bought a Hemi. I don't know. I don't really know the answer. He doesn't even know the answer to that. Uh, you know, that's just how he rolls. I think he was thinking gas mileage. But for me, I'd rather the V8 Hemi because, you know, the old power-to-weight ratio will kind of even out your fuel mileage a little bit. If you don't have enough engine to pull that heavy truck, you're going to have crappy fuel mileage anyway, so. But uh, he loves it. There's some things he has, some cons, but I'm saving that for the video when I do it with the truck. Uh, Buckman, how you doing? What's up? I uh, hope all is well. Still waiting on my pro. Oh, the waiting game continues. I hope you get it tomorrow, but uh, who knows? Are they at least telling you updates on how far out it may be? Because a lot of these dealers, they have when it's built, when it gets on, you know, the, the line to go on the train when it's on the train, when it's delivered at port, and when it gets to your dealership. I hope they're able to tell you that. I'm trading my pro there, uh, Tori. I'm going to use that uh, as it's going to be a giant down payment toward the next one because I'm way in the green on my pro right now. And it is army green. No pun intended. Eric says, Mark, what do you think Toyota will come out with an all-electric Tundra to compete with the F-150 Lightning and others? Uh, knowing Toyota, probably 2163. Model year 2163 is when they'll come out with the EV. Yeah. I don't know. 
who knows, maybe 2025. That's always the rumor. I keep hearing 2025. But knowing Toyota, they'll probably take their time. Isaiah says, they stated it was the heater actuator, which they replaced because of a noise it was making in the AC gets turned on. Every time the AC gets turned on. Every time the AC or heat is turned on, it makes a whining noise for a sec. What mine does, in hot weather, if I turn my truck on and I turn the AC on right away, it makes this whoosh. Uh, but it's completely normal. But a, a lot of people complain about that. But it is something that will blow your mind if you're not used to it. You'll think something broke. Uh, Rodeo says, I've been working the graveyard shift for about 30 years, mostly 10 to 6 a.m., but the last five years, 6 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. Love it. Now I'm retired. Cheers to that. Absolutely. I like graveyard. Um, you know, I don't have, like, a home life, but the work life is a lot better, which helps the home life. I've just learned to deal with no sleep. Uh, yeah. One day, hopefully, the channel is my main source of income, and then we can do live streams every day. Dan says a Tacoma is a good truck. However, for a guy my size, it's a bit too small. I could definitely see that because the cab is a bit tiny in there. Tori says, has anyone in here been able to actually test drive a new Tundra? I certainly have. Both the iForce and the iForce Max for a week each at a time. Jordan, what's going on, buddy? Toyota Tundra, 65 box gooseneck hitch. Fifth wheel gooseneck hitch. People have been trying to put the goosenecks on the new Tundra. Um, I've seen a couple folks on forums doing that, so that is a thing. Uh, Buckman says, been offered solar octane, uh, new allocation. I, oh, when they have a new allocation, you get notified. I like it. Solar octane, nothing wrong with that. For me, this is just me, uh, a little loud. The, the color is a little loud. Uh, you know, lunar or the black, even the white, I would probably pick over solar octane, but that's the special color. So that's going to be the one everybody wants. That was like Inferno when the TRD Pro came out. Everybody wanted that up front. So who knows, but... You know, not a bad truck either way. The Pro is amazing, you know. Um, you know, before I got in it and before I, you know, drove it, I was kind of skeptical, just like everybody else. But when you get in these trucks and drive them, and, and the thing is, is if you guys go out and take a test drive on these trucks, you're going to go around the block for 15, 20 minutes. I was blessed enough to be able to drive these trucks for a week at a time each. So Friday to Friday and then Friday to Friday. So I was able to sit there, break apart the truck, take it on the highway, take it local, drive around and do my errands, drive to work, do the reviews. You know, I basically, when I take the truck in, I, I drive it like it's mine. And I try to get the pros, the cons. I try to drive it how you guys would. I take it food shopping. We go to Lowe's and get mulch. Like, I, I do things with it like that. Uh, when my father has a boat, I'll try to tow the boat around a little bit to see how it feels with the boat. Uh, you know, just to get a vibe of the truck. And, you know, that's why when I make the videos, I'm able to try to stress to you the things you're going to do every day with it. I don't have good spots to off-road around here. That's a lie. I have great spots to off-road around here, but everything's illegal in this area to off-road. Uh, but most of the folks out here are going to drive this truck. It's a $70,000 truck. 90% of its life is going to be on the road. So I try to focus on all the everyday stuff. That'd be me. Uh, let's see, lunar or white with black interior. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Tori says, I knew you had wise guy. LOL. A local dealer told me a test drive wouldn't even be a possibility. Damned if I'm forking over 70K on something I can't drive first. That is a bad move um, by that dealership, and that is not the first time I heard it. First off, let's give a shout out to a dealership real quick, because when they do right, they should be talked about. There is a place in Vermont called Handy Toyota. They have their own YouTube channel. I've been watching them long before Tundra Dude even existed. Um, they, they have a Tundra, a 2022 SR5 TRD off-road. That's not for sale. I made a video on this, and it's just for test drives. You go there, and you make an appointment to have a test drive. They keep it on there for that reason. Great idea, because the Tundra never changes, right? It's been the same platform, per se, since 07. So you're getting something ground up. You're changing the engine. You're changing the transmission. People want to feel that before they spend big dollars. Very smart. Handy Toyota did that. There's a few dealerships that do that. Test drive only Tundra, not for sale. Amazing idea. Some of these other dealerships I've heard, they won't let you test drive. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, even if they wanted to do a thing where you have to, like, prove your income or something just to show that, like, you're an actual, you're not just there kicking tires, you're there to be a potential buyer, I'm down with that. But you got to let folks test drive it, or else they're not going to buy it. These, this is not cheap stuff anymore. These trucks are going for, like, a small ranch house now. I'm going to need a test drive. So if, you're, if I'm not test driving, I'm walking away. You know, that's just me. Sean says, 
I've seen quite a few 2022s now. Still not crazy about styling. I'll wait to see a Pro. Probably be the only thing I'll be interested in. Perfectly happy with my 19 Pro. I gotta tell you, I'm very torn. I love the Pro. The Pro, I just like the setup of the Pro. I like the look of it. I like, um, you know, the off-road goodies that are on it. I just like the setup, what they've done since the beginning of the Pro. But this new generation, 2022, 1794, they kind of muted that saddle brown down a little bit so it's not that like orange interior. It's like brown interior. If you're new, just check this out if you're new to the channel. This is actually a seat from the 2022 Tundra. You're not gonna be able to see much of it because of the, here, let me get that. This is actually a 2022 1794 saddle brown seat I turned into an office chair. It still has its airbags and all its electronics on it. But this is what I use to do my live streams and make my videos. So I can attest to how comfortable these seats are. But I will tell you, as you can see, for $17.94 for 2022, new generation, it's a lot more of a brown than an orange. And they've done things to the interior of the $17.94 that make it a lot better of a color combo versus some of the past year ones. Like the last uh, generation, 14 to 21, was very, they had like a lot of simulated wood grain everywhere, black, silver, chrome, orange. There was a lot going on. Now everything is that nice saddle brown. Everything works together. It's that and black. It even has a black headliner. So I've fallen in love again with the 1794 Tundra, for sure. All right, where am I? Tori says, as much as it hurts to say, I'm leaning toward the new ZR2 Silverado just to spite those clowns. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I like the GMCs a lot more than the Chevys. I know it's the same thing, but AT4 would be more my style if I was going that direction. The 1794 is way better looking inside for sure. Yes, they've done a lot. Everything is... It felt like the 14 to 21, um, it was really that Western theme, but it was the Western theme on top of the existing interior of other trims of Tundra. Now it feels like this is the 1794 trim. I made a video on this a while ago about how each trim kind of has a unique look to their interior a lot more than last generation and I applaud them heavily for said interior. They listened to a lot of stuff. Alan says, have you seen the Canadian Tundra TRD Sport? No chrome. I don't understand why it isn't offered here. Uh, with the dollar conversion, the 4x4 price is around 44000 US. Wish I could buy that. So I've been saying that for years. The Canadian and the U.S. market of Tundras is completely different. Let me, let me speak more to last generation because I know a lot more about that when it comes to the Canadian version. In the 15 to 17 TRD Pro in the United States, you couldn't get blind spot monitoring, parking sensors. You couldn't get a moonroof, okay? In Canada, that was standard on the TRD Pro when you couldn't get it like that here. In the 19 and up TRD Pro, in the United States, you were now available, or it was now built off of a limited platform so you could get that moonroof, but you still couldn't get blind spot monitoring and parking sensors. That was standard in Canada during that. SR5, Crew Max, down here in the United States, you can't get a moonroof. Up in Canada, you can. So there's a lot of differences here and there, and it has to do with the market, and it has to do with how people spend money with trucks up there, and that's kind of what they go after. Um, so that's why you see a lot more of a different stuff. You gotta remember, the United States, that's their main market. Okay, so there's going to be a lot more variety here. There's going to be a lot more things that they break down a lot more, meaning there might be, uh, you know, options available differently on certain trims down here. Up there, there's not as much of options. You'll see a lot less up there. So, you know, they kind of just feed these options in a little bit differently. So when you get the truck, you might be paying a little bit more, but you're getting, you know, as many options as they could give on trims like the SR5 with the available moonroof up there, but not here. Down here, you got to go limited. Uh, Gerald says the gray platinum, love it. You can't go wrong with mag gray, and you can't go wrong with platinum. And I don't care what generation we're talking about. I filmed uh, on Sunday, I was at the local dealership, and they had a 2019 or so platinum there. And it just, I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. 2018, they changed the grill on the platinum. It looks good. Everything is really body color. There's chrome, mirror, caps, and handles, which can be removed, but don't look bad on the black platinum or a gray platinum. Uh, even the new generation platinum is amazing looking. Amazing. Amazing. Lord says, if I'm going GMC Chevy 1500, I'm going 6.2 V8 or 3.0 Duramax. The 2.7 is a terrible engine for no gas mileage benefit, and the 5.3 is kind of boring. I concur. 
on the 6.2 V8. It's a must. If you're going to go, you're going to go all the way here tonight. You're going to go all the way and get the 6.2 tonight. There's always room for meatloaf. There's always room for it. Doesn't matter if it's a live stream or a video. Meatloaf is allowed to be here. DH says, Mark, I'm with you on the chair. The 1794 leather seating is more brown and looks great. Thanks for sharing. And if you don't really like the brown, there's also a cream colored interior for the 1794 available too. So you have your choices. I don't think I would do that one because it would probably get really dirty really quick. Um, but, uh, but who knows? But who knows? Also, I, because you guys are here, there's 30 of you. I thank you guys for being here. Again, I know it's a weird time. A lot of people are still at work. Um, if you would like to, to let everyone know where you're coming from in the country today or the world, I'd be happy to hear. So uh, let's shout it out. I'm in New Jersey. I don't want to be, but I'm here. Uh, so let us know. But one thing to keep in mind with all of this stuff that we're talking about with the 1794, cream interior, all that, the capstone has a very unique interior. The capstone will be on this channel shortly. I don't know when yet. Uh, as a press loan for a week. So we're going to get to drive that capstone. The new primary trim of Tundra. I look forward to that. I look forward to seeing if it's worth it. That's going to be... I have a whole idea of the direction I'm going to go with that. Versus the 1794 and Platinum. Is the extra money worth it with the capstone? We're going to figure it out. Dan says, hey, Mark, still here? Good stuff. I hope so. I hope so, Dan. Tori says, Sweat Lake. There's always a new name for uh, the old Salt Lake City. Michael, how you doing, buddy? Only 19 likes. Everybody smash the like button in support of Mark. I appreciate you, sir. That is very nice of you. And now we will take a sip. And as we ask you where you're from, I'm going to do it again. A huge shout out to the emergency services and military of the United States and Canada. We love you. Thank you for everything you do to keep us safe each and every day. God bless. I should also point out, like I like to, all of these, the hats there, and all of these patches are from you, the viewer, that have sent them in. So thank you very much for sending in your patches. It's always good. You got to support the emergency services. You got to support the military, or you don't have a foundation of a country. The nation needs good military and emergency services, and we have it here in the United States and Canada, and that's a good thing. Matt says, Holland, Michigan, and no new tundras around here. I hear you, Matt. No new tundras around here either. One or two here and there. Sometimes I get a nice spike of like five for a quick little minute, but that's it. Other than that, I don't have anything. By the way, I should uh, announce to you guys now, just because there's a few of you here, there will be a video going up tonight, probably shortly after this live stream. I kind of just uh, squeezed this live stream in because I wanted to come say hi to you guys. So uh, there will be a video tonight. I hope you'll check it out. Uh, Gerald says, Wilson, North Carolina in the house. Always, always. Longtime subscriber there. Mike says, smash the like button. I appreciate you, pal. Aaron says, Stockton, New Jersey. Very close to me. Very close to me. Right by the college. Great golf course down by you. Um, Seaview. That's a good golf course. Go there about once a year. The truck I want is a Ram 1500 Laramie GT. Awesome throaty exhaust and an actual console shifter. No rotary shifter. I agree with the console shifter. I'm still a fan of that. Never liked the rotary thing. Sean says, Jonesboro, Tennessee. We knew that. Uh, Julio says, Brownsville, Texas. Hello, Julio. How you doing? It's always good to have Texas in the house. You're always going to have a good live stream when you get Texas, California, Nevada, Arizona, Florida, and then those uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, all the good states there. Canada. Canada is always here, always representing. Got to love it. Some live streams, we have all 50 states in Canada here, which is awesome. Sometimes we get countries overseas, um, UAE, Dubai, stuff like that. That's always cool. So I appreciate you guys spending your time here for sure. I mean, you could be doing anything right now, but you're here sitting with me in my office. We're having a, an adult beverage. We're talking Tundra. It's a good time. It's a good time. Whether there's one or three million of you, I like doing it. How hot is Brownsville right now? Always toasty, says Tori. I'm sure it's hot. It is 100 degrees here in New Jersey today and uh, windy, which, you know, meh, I'm good. I like a nice 75, 71 to 75. Like tomorrow, I'm golfing tomorrow. It's going to be ugly out there. Very, very hot. Neil's in Johnson City, Tennessee. Another fantastic state. Bristol is, well, the Bristol racetrack used to be a lot better than it is today. You know, they changed, reconfigured it in 07. That was a bad idea. I don't know why you'd mess with that. It was a great track. They ruined it. 
Alan says, Maryland, and I agree, I'd rather be someplace else too. Tundra inventory is pretty much dried up here, unless you want to pay well over MSRP. Alan, here we go. Question for you, buddy. What is your thoughts on the Maryland uh, crab you have down there? Last time I went to Maryland, everybody talks about how good the you know crab cakes and everything are. I, I kind of like the uh, New Jersey, New England crabs a little bit better. You gotta let me know what you think. I thought Maryland would change my life. It did not. Troy says, Mississippi in the house. What's up, Mark? How you doing, Troy? It's good to see you, buddy. How's the Army Green 2020 treating you? Mike says, Northern California. I own a 2020 Super White TRD Pro, and by far my favorite attribute is the V8 Grumble exhaust. No, absolutely. High five. I totally agree. I'd go hybrid if I want the new gen. Mark, what do you think of the piped-in exhaust note? Everybody hates the piped-in exhaust note. I'm here to tell you I love the piped-in exhaust note. You know why? Because I'm hearing a badass engine like the old 5.7 V8. I don't care what anybody outside is hearing. I like the sound. People are talking about wanting to disable it and everything. I'm good. You disable yours, I'm going to keep mine. Turn mine up a little bit more. It doesn't sound terrible outside. It sounds like... Think of the Raptor, how it has that very unique sound. It's like that, a little dimmed out, uh, but the interior has that great growl. I'm a fan. Uh, Adam says, Birmingham, Alabama, how's it going, Mark? How are you doing, man? If you're good, I'm good. You know, you know a lot of states represented now. I like it. Tori says, uh, <laughs> do the Jersey crabs come out of the water with a cigarette in their mouth? Yeah, it's New Jersey. I mean, this is the beach part of New Jersey, though. This is different from the rest of the state. Please keep that in mind. Six seven, what's going on, buddy? He says, good to see you. Just realized late that you're online live. A weird time. I apologize. Michael says, right on. Thanks. Always happy to help. William says, from Alabama, prior Marine, retired trooper. Got a 2022 Mag Gray Platinum three weeks ago. Love it so far. Love the matching wheels, grill, door handles, and smoke gray mustache. I agree. First off, William, this cheers is for you. As a Marine, thank you for defending our country. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your Platinum. Because the Platinum is the best. Gotta love the emergency services and military. I'll say it all day, every day. Zach says, just accepted my allocation for my 2022 1794 iForce Max. I'm jealous of you. I'm very jealous of you. And I'm jealous of you because, like I said, if you just signed on, we're sitting in a 1794 seat right now. This is the seat of the 2022 1794. I can tell you it's very comfortable. You'll really enjoy it. Way more comfortable than the older generation seats. Um, Dirty says, 94 feels like 108 in Louisiana. Too hot. Alan says, Maryland blue crab is good, but I'm not a native of Maryland, so it's not the way of life for me. Haven't tried any in New Jersey. They do more of a garlic crab situation up here, and it's, uh, it's very good. It's very good. Can't get enough of it, to be honest with you. Uh, my father and I used to go, uh, you know, we did lobsters, crabs, we did, uh, uh, clams. We did a lot of fishing on our own, so. Dirty says, how does the piped-in exhaust sound work? Basically, every time you get on the pedal, if you get on the pedal easy, it's just the little noise. If you get on the pedal hard or medium, it pipes in pretty good. But it's not annoying. I will say it's very well done. It's The engineering of it was very well done. Uh, but But it's a great sound. It's not a bad sound. It sounds just like the TRD dual exhaust on the 5.7 V8. That's what I got out of it, and I enjoyed it. It's a much better color than the previous pumpkin leather. Yes, Troy says, doing good, Mark. A little over 10K so far. Love driving this truck. Always less is more, and the V8 is unstoppable. Nothing wrong with that. Jim F. says, I love it. Absolutely, absolutely. Another platinum owner. Oh, man. So what? Uh, what, what is it? Tuesday, right? Midweek? Is anybody at work right now, or is everybody home from work? I know we saw a couple of retirees on here. Jealous of you guys. Uh, but uh, weird time, like I said. I like to do the streams around 8 p.m., but I don't, I'm don't. i going to be in bed by 8. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. Alan says, have you talked about GM making OnStar mandatory yet? Really hope Toyota doesn't go that way. I saw um, Tim's channel, Pickup Truck and SUV Talk. I saw that pop up on my Facebook maybe yesterday that he made a video on that. Um, that's crazy, but you know what? Par for the course, man. I think that's coming down the pike. I think that's, it's, it's just, it's an insane time for the automotive industry. 
you know, blood from a stone at this point because there's not much more money you could take from the regular everyday people. These trucks are insanely expensive. To make a subscription that you have to get, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Are we forgetting the loyalty of all the years that people have had to brands and we're just taking everything we can? Uh, it blows my mind. So I hope that doesn't happen to Toyota. Uh, remote connected services is optional and uh, you know it comes free for a little while so you get an idea and a taste of it if you want it or not. I don't use any of it, I don't think. I think I still have navigation, uh, a dynamic navigation, whatever it's called because it's for the first like three years. Um, but I don't have the remote start service on that. I have it on my key fob still. Um, but there's a couple things I don't have anymore, and, and I'm fine with that, man. I'm old school. I don't need an app to tell me where my truck is in the country. Uh, maybe if, you know, my wife was taking my Tundra on a cross-country trip, yeah, I'd get the app so I could see where the truck was at all times for safety reasons. But I'm, yeah, my thing is this. When it comes to me and technology, I'm slow, all right? I don't upgrade to the newest stuff right away. I've just never been that guy. So, uh, the apps, you know, they're still kind of new. I know, obviously, apps have been around forever, but, like, Toyota hasn't had an app for longer than a few years. 2020 was the first time the Tundra had the app. So, I hope it doesn't become mandatory, but who knows. Aaron says, Stockton is south of Flemington, near the border of PA, close to Fred Bean's Toyota. Why did I think that? I was thinking Stockton University then. My bad. Ten push-ups owed to you, Aaron. Uh, Fred Beans is where I got my 2020 from, and I got my wife's forerunner from. They're great people there. Troy says, vacation this week. I like it. Neil says, home for the day from Snap-on Tools. I like that. Emmanuel says, I'm out of work, but at the gym listening, not watching. You got to listen, bro. Get the reps in. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Just get in there and kill it. You got to go in there, and you got to bust it out. I don't want to hear about sets that are 10 and 15. You go to failure today. Every single set, you go 110%. All right, and then you go home and you eat steak and eggs. Let's go. Come on. Come on. If we're working out, let's do it. Don't waste time. Let's go. Emmanuel, make it happen, Captain. Tori says, got to go. Give the folks a target more of my money. Nice to catch up. Take care, Mark. All right, buddy. Be safe. Be well. It's good talking to you as always. Thank you for being here. Tori is another one that's been around the channel for many years, and uh, I always appreciate him. You guys are my friends. It's awesome. And that's what it is. It's like a bunch of friends sitting around a big table right now. Talking about trucks and other things that pop up on our mind, you know? We got a problem on our hands. We're out of that. So let's pop open a fresh one here. And then, how was everybody's July 4th? That's a good question we haven't talked about. I had a nice one. Spent it with uh, my father and my wife. It was a good time family brother came up that's when we did the video about the ram also i should say jimmy how you doing buddy good to see you um as you guys probably have noticed i started doing this at the, i think the very end of may um on the days i don't make videos and even the days i do make videos i've been doing these things called shorts uh which are quick little minute long videos i've been having a lot of fun doing those in between the long format videos i normally do I hope you folks are enjoying them. It's just quick little facts and fun stuff here and there. Uh, but they are a lot of fun to do. And, uh, you know, I'm able to sink in just as much information as possible to you guys about Tundra. Whether it be what I see on the dealership lot, crazy prices online, little Easter eggs that we always talk about on the Tundra. But the short little videos I've been adding every day have been a lot of fun. I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you haven't watched them yet, check them out. Because, uh, you know, they get better as I... You know, when I got started, I had no idea what I was doing. No idea what I was doing. Because the pictures have to be a certain size. Everything's vertical now. So I don't do TikTok or anything like that. So I had to learn. And you will see that through the videos. I've become a professional at them now. But I hope you enjoy them. Like I said, the more information, the better to give out to everyone. Uh, so check them out. Dave, what's going on, pal? It's good to see you. Isaiah says, I appreciate the shorts. Yeah, I figured, you know what? Sometimes you want something quick and easy, you know? It takes a minute to give you a little information versus eight minutes, right? Lord says, I was working both July 4th and 5th, so I was asleep. The homeless are still homeless on the holidays and still need someone to mind the shelter. Hey, you know what? And that's amazing of you. You're a good person, and I appreciate you doing that. I also worked. I didn't work on, I worked on the 4th. I didn't work on the weekend, so I was able to uh, hang out and do a little something, something on the weekend. But yeah, 
I always purposely try to work on the holidays because I make more money. So um, I just want to make as much money as possible because I need it, you know, the wife and I. She, she just got I graduated with her master's, so she got a job, but we got to get to the point where that job begins, so uh, I'm holding it down until then. Gilmer says, went on vacation with, the tw or with my 2020 Tundra with the kids to Yosemite in California. Now it's getting on fire. Yeah, so how was uh, the trip? Because I would always like to go to Yosemite and Yellowstone and all those national parks. That is on the bucket list. I've still never been out west. I do want to go out west, though, and I will. I certainly will. Good times, for sure. It's hot down here, man. That fan is not doing what it should be doing. Ooh, I'm sweating. That's why you gotta wear black when you're on the live streams. You can't tell how much I'm sweating right now, but I am. I want you to know that. I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. This Actually, this live stream I planned to do in the cab of my truck, but uh, it's too hot. The cameras don't like heat. I'll tell you that right now. And it's 100 degrees out there, and I couldn't imagine what the temperature would be sitting in the vehicle. So we did it in here, but this is fine. It's kind of air-conditioned, but I don't have air conditioning in this area of the house. Central air is upstairs. So bear with me. See how talkative I am? It's the coffee. That's what coffee does to me. Any updates on your new Tundra Pro coming soon? What color are you going with? There's still, uh, there's not an update there, we're getting close to completion, but I've had so many fall-throughs along the way that I'm waiting until everything's 100% before I make any announcement. But I'm doing my best, and we're very close. So bear with me a little bit longer, and then I shall update for sure. And then, I said this in a video I made the other day, I'll end up getting the new Tundra, and then I'm going to make a video a month later saying how much I miss my V8 Tundra. That's a guarantee. But my goal is to buy eventually an RCSB Tundra along with the new one. I just don't have the funds for that right now. Uh, you know, that's the regular cab standard bed that I love. Uh, and then I'll have a 5.7 V8 also. But uh, got to figure out the cash flow situation first. Got to get everything going with that. And then we'll figure out the next move. But uh, I think we're going to call it a live stream here. I got to go and hang out with the wife because I barely see her anymore with these graveyard ships. But please know, if you are on here right now, very shortly, I made a video. It's going up in a little while. I hope you guys will tune in. I hope you guys will watch it. And I hope you will enjoy it. So I appreciate you being here on a live stream on a very weird time. Um, I will try to do more live streams and later so everyone can uh, you know, watch it. If you're watching this later when it's not live, I apologize. I know out west, what time is it? If it's 6 o'clock here, it's 3 o'clock all the way out in Cali. Uh, so I appreciate you guys stopping in and checking out. Sean's out of here. He's got to go like the grill. It's steak night. You didn't invite me. I'm not mad. You owe me one. Troy says, take care, Mark. Troy, you as well, buddy. Jim, you take care as well, too, sir. Everybody have a good one out there. Be safe. Be well. And once again, please thank a vet today. Thank somebody in the military or the emergency services because they're the reason this country is as great as it is. So until next time, be safe, be well, take care, and watch the video that's